The last episode had one of the most shocking moments in the entire series. Well, you think this place is a big experiment, right? It never occurred to some of the people here might be in on it. I also keep the experiment on track. This scene really amazed me because it really seems like the writers are telling us somebody in this town is not who they say they are. I've got my eyes on 10 people who might be snitching on us behind our backs. So let's talk about them. Well, I mean, could you tell me what you're looking for? Maybe? Oh, what the fuck? Number 10, Tian Chen. Now this is a very interesting character to consider as the snitch cause she's decently liked both in the community and the fans but what really makes me th think this is how amazingly beneficial her position in the community would be for someone who's working as a mole she has access to the food she has access to the drinks and both of those things mean she can easily poison the people in the community i've seen so many fans arguing and talking about the idea that these people in the town are acting so stupid because their food supply is getting poisoned by somebody. Tian Chen has, Tian Chen has access to all of the food. So, huh? maybe she's the one doing the poisoning. Not to mention she has access to all of the information that the town has. Every, whenever somebody dies, whenever somebody gets killed or goes to the forest or whatever the fuck, Tian Chen gets everything that was in their household and she puts it in the diner. What that means is she can easily hide people who wrote letters or discovered something and wrote it down in a letter maybe before they went exploring and they got killed or something. And she has the lockdown on all of that information. It's genius because she controls the food and the information. It's such a genius position for a mole to be in in the community. Excuse me? Sheriff Boyd, right? Sorry, I don't, uh... Tilly, I, I was on the bus. This uh, wasn't exactly my preferred destination. I understand you yourself had a bit of an adventure. Number nine, Tilly. Everywhere this old woman goes, it's always drama every single time. When she went to talk to Boyd, she told him that Kenny went to the clinic and that was after he found out that Boyd knew Sarah was, the, was responsible for his dad's death, which means drama. The second time was when she went to tell Christy that she has morphine and she wanted to give the morphine to Christy and surprise, surprise, Marielle, who was sitting right there, just happens to have a morphine addiction. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. How did she know that Boyd went on an adventure? Who told her that? And the way she was telling Jim that she's been traveling around the world to bet on the ponies. What? You know, she just, she has the type of nonchalant attitude that really gives off the, this is all according to the plan attitude that so many anime villains tend to have. Overall, there's so many things about her that seem out of place. So her being the mole would not surprise me. God. God. Oh my God, I can see that. Give it to me. What? Give it to me. Number eight, the beach, Kenny. Now Kenny, man, the thing about Kenny being a mole is so fascinating because when you remember that scene in episode six, when Kenny kept egging on Boyd, Give me the worms, just give me the worms, just give me the worms. And Boyd didn't want to do that, you know? After he was gaslighting Boyd into believing that the worms didn't exist, that there, there was no worms. You don't see any worms, you're just going crazy, you're, de you're demented, you're, it's dementia, bro, chill down. You know, if the worms are a weapon or an upgrade, it would make sense for the mole to want to have control over them. After all, their people would have been the ones who trapped Martin in the first place. Kenny has had some weird moments like saying he's lost hope. That was in the first few episodes, but now 15 episodes later and he's still going strong, you know? It could have been just a way to instill anxiety and depression in the community. Kenny, like Jim, and maybe Fatima seems to me like someone who could easily cause another massacre like Christopher. Kenny taking everybody out except his mom and Christy would be insane. Can I ask you something? If there was something you could do, something that would let you see Marielle again, even if it was something bad, would you do it? Being hypothetically, right? I mean, yeah, I'd, um, I'd do anything to see her again. Number seven, Christy. I've seen people say that Christy could be the mole and that the reason Marielle was sent to Fromville was done as a reward 
for her successfully snitching to the people in control. And that is a crazy idea. But this is a crazy place, so I don't even know. It's possible. Her being the town doctor means that she can easily just kill problematic people by letting them die when they get an injury and then claim it's because she didn't know how to help them, you know? People like Kelly, for example. And Kelly definitely seemed special cause she started crying in pain right when Boyd and therefore the worms were approaching her. Was that a coincidence? I don't know. And the monsters either didn't want to kill her or they were forbidden from killing her. Maybe that's why Martin was chained up and trapped instead of killed. What if the monsters can't kill specific people? Christy being a mole and therefore receiving a reward from them in the form of Marielle is a very interesting idea. What are you talking about? Storm came out of nowhere and the way the lights exploded, it's almost like we made something angry. Number six, Clara. Clara is someone that I only started to consider after she had that conversation with Jade in the season 2 premiere. She told Jade that it's weird how the house collapsed and the storm coming happened at the same time. She was heavily implying that it was done on purpose by someone or something as a reaction to what they've been doing in the town. She was either hinting that it was the entity doing it or somebody, somebody, somebody. How, but why would she do that? Maybe the people at the lighthouse, I don't know, but it definitely gave off the vibe that somebody was, respons was responsible for the storm and the house collapse. It's an interesting idea and I definitely agree with what she said, but the issue is she's way ahead of the curve compared to the rest of the sheep in this town. She's almost a little too smart for my liking. Oh, you don't touch my sister. Are you fucking kidding me? If this is gonna work, you're gonna. No. Now, this only works if he stays out of my shit. Period. I got a way of doing things too. You touch my stuff, I will smack the fucking shit out of you. Number five, Randall. <laughs> now, this, it's kind of a similar situation with Clara. This guy over here, he's such a fucking asshole, but this was the first person on the show to ever mention the possibility of the mole. Think of it like this. If you were a snitch yourself, the best way to stop yourself from being suspected of snitching is to accuse somebody else of being the snitch in the organization. You know, it's genius. It's perfection. It's mm, chef's kiss. It's an incredible way to remove suspicion from yourself. And with the way the story is going right now, it kind of feels like the same way Christopher and Sarah were manipulated is the same way Jim or Jade are going to be manipulated. I think Jim could easily be manipulated into killing a lot of people by making him believe there is a mole some way, somehow, somewhere, some way, somehow. And that that mole is feeding information to the people who are watching them. Randall having a gun and a drone. How convenient, you know, how convenient. If Randall is the mole, then getting Jim to kill people for him is a very high IQ strategy. Just don't, don't look down, just look out. Why did you bring me here? Because I wanted you to see. And if you climb high enough, even a nightmare can look like a dream. Number four, Fatima. Oh man, before the last episode, I wouldn't have even considered her as a possibility for the mole because her being the mole would be crazy. The thing about Fatima is in the first episode, we saw her talking to Julie and she told Julie that if you look at it in the right way, even a nightmare can look like a dream. And that is an interesting idea because if Fatima is working for the others in the island, oh wait, that's the wrong show. <laughs> if Fatima is working for another group of people living in Fromland or if these people worship Fromland or the entity or whatever, maybe they don't want people to leave Fromland. So her saying this place can be like a dream makes a lot more sense when you look at it from that perspective. If she's always been secretly a monster or a banshee or whatever the hell she is, then it would give a totally different perspective to the idea that she can't have kids. It's also worth noting it's also worth noting she looks when Donna mentions the teleportation trees, almost like she's wondering, how the fuck did she know? How the fuck did she know about that? Maybe she was sent there for a mission, but she ended up falling in love with Alice and now they're having a kid. If she is a banshee or whatever, it would make a lot more sense for her to believe she wouldn't be able to have any kids with a human. 
maybe she was sent there for a mission that included killing people who are special people like Yao Jin. And maybe that's why she was drowning him. It's also interesting that she was the one who told Elgin that hearing and seeing things isn't that special. And that lots of people have tried to leave Fromville. But where are these so-called people? Because apart from our main cast, everybody else is just accepting the life of Fromland. So if she is a double agent or a snitch or whatever, it did make sense that she's propagating disinformation throughout the community so that they don't try to find the way out so that they accept the status quo but fear might be the most important one of all why because without fear I wouldn't know how to be brave fear is what makes us heroes number three donna first of all when donna talks to tabitha in season one she tells the girl tabby that when her wife self got to Fromland for the first time ever, her sister got tortured, got tortured to death by the monsters. People have pointed out that we've never seen anyone else talking about her sister before, and it's kind of weird for someone to carry such a large portrait of herself and her sister just randomly in their car when they're going hunting, supposedly something that they do often. You know, if they were moving, it would make sense, but they were just going hunting. Another thing is with Fatima's pregnancy. If it's considered impossible to get pregnant in Fromland, then it would make a lot more sense for Donna, who, if the mole, would know that and therefore would be really happy that somebody got pregnant in Fromland. Donna's position of authority in the community is mm, one of the best places to be if you're a mole because she can easily stop people from digging too deep. People like Jim Matthews, like, I don't know, telling Jim that he should lie about the voice on the radio. Uh -huh. Or maybe her hiding food was intentionally done to increase tensions and stress within the community. That would be a 400 IQ type move for sure. If the theory about you being immune to the monsters, if you have no fear, is true, then her telling Ethan fear is a strength, it becomes a very scary principle that she tried to instill into him, you know, because it's basically setting him up to get killed. Assuming it's true, I don't agree, but you know, anything is possible. Donna being the mole is a very complex theory and there's many things you can point to and her position in the community is perfect for someone who wants to sow the crops of disinformation and prevent actual progress. When I seen that thing was right there. I don't know if what I'm supposed to remember is real. This is a good thing. I mean, if, if we can hurt them, if we can kill them, everybody here is going to be a whole lot safe. So why are you upset? Number two, Elgin. When he first got to Fromville, Elgin has this massive reaction to arriving and that really gave off the vibe that he'd already been there before. He saw the brandles and was talking about seeing it before. Elgin told Julie when he saw the body of Smiley lying on the ground there, he got the feeling that he was supposed to remember something about the body, but he didn't. And he wasn't sure if it was from his dream or from something else. There's a lot of stuff about Elgin that is sus as fuck. It seems like he was sent to the town with a mission, but he lost his memory and now he thinks his mission was just a dream was the banshee that was drowning him doing it out of revenge or malice hmm? martin said the music box is a warning it, that it means the monsters are coming if the ballerina was trying to help boyd and warn him about the worms that being that the worms can either upgrade the monsters or kill them we don't know yet it could be that the creature was drowning Elgin to prevent him from hurting our people who are living in the town. Remember, Elgin is the only character in the entire show that Victor ever says isn't trustworthy. Hmm. I don't trust him. Still alive. For now. He didn't even say that about Jim, even though Jim tried to beat him up. Elgin, he's definitely very suspicious and I'm keeping an eye on him. It's very sus. Very sus. Number one, Victor. Oh man, oh man, okay. This is the saddest option by far, but there's a lot about cool guy Vic that would make a million times more sense if it turns out that he was a rat the entire time. Like surviving for decades in this supernatural war zone without any talismans and 
He never got gut. How? That's that's insane. It's impossible. And side note, what the fuck happened to all of the bodies after Vic found them after the massacre? Did he move and bury all those bodies by himself while he was like nine years old? That's crazy. Maybe Vic is like Benjamin Linus, but but his situation is a thousand times worse because he ain't a psychopath like Ben. They could have been, these people could have been responsible for killing his mother, killing his community, and then they took him in pretending that they had nothing to do with it. Then he was alone as a boy, so they easily manipulated him for decades. You know, it definitely explain where he got the food, the shelter, and how he survived this entire time. But uh, anyways, those are a bunch of people who I've seen having some shady ass moments throughout the show. But I'm not done yet. This is the honorable mention. Uh, oh my God, you have no idea. Uh, listen, we don't have very much time. Where are you? Ooh, slow down. Is this Jim? Jim Matthews. Jim Matthews. Whoa, why the fuck would I say that Jim himself could be the mole? Why? Okay, let's talk about this. Jim is a roller coaster ride designer. So what what if they hired him specifically because of that? Because he knows how to get the heart pumping up. What if the reason the guy on the radio recognized the Jim Matthews wasn't because there's someone monitoring them, but because Jim Matthews works with them? Did you ever consider that? <laughs> what if Jim actually wants to make things scarier and worse for the people of this town? And he was agitating the entity by building the radio tower and digging his basement on purpose to make things worse for the townspeople. It's crazy to think about and makes it much darker the way he kept shutting down Tabitha for what she saw with her own eyes down in the tunnels. Jim being the mole would blow everyone's mind cause he's been at the forefront of finding a way out of Fromville the entire series. There are so many people who've done really shady shit that it's really hard to decide who's the mole and who isn't. There are so many options. It could also be that there simply isn't any mole. And that's just as crazy to think about. But man, I really wish this guy <laughs> was still alive because if anybody deserves to be the rat, it's Tom. Nobody deserves it more than him. He embodies the rat. How could you have a snitch and not have him be this guy? How? How? 